Hi, my name is Marco Cantu. I'm product manager for RAD Studio at the Mercadero Technologies, and I'm here to present a skill sprint focused on Windows Shell integration. The skill sprint is focused on Windows development only, and it's going to use the VCL and VCL components, and it um, equally applies to Delphi and C++ Builder. I'm going to have demos in either or the other um, language. Um, if you don't know about those, skill sprints are short webinars focused on practical side of development with lots of code and demos, and this is no exception. We're actually going to, sh to go through a lot of, a lot of actual code. Um, what's the focus? The focus is integrating your application with the Windows Shell. This is particularly true when the application has some sort of file system integration, although it's not the only, the only scenario. We are going to focus on jump list, um, supporting drag and drop from Explorer, um, opening a file directly by passing the file to the application on the command line, and finally, a little bit on specific um, shell extensions and specifically in menu shell extension. So we're going to touch on a few related things, which is uh, using the command line parameters, which is um, looking at implementing single instance applications, so applications that run uh, one instance only, one executable only. And finally, also we'll be writing a com server because that's what uh, a shell extension actually is in practical terms. So the introduction, which we kind of almost covered, but there are many areas. I mean, again, I could really take this from, from a number of different point of views. The Windows shell is extremely rich and is made of different subsystems. Uh, but my focus, again, will be specifically file system, jump list, um, shell extension um, related in, in that sort of sequence because that's, that's how we'll build um, step uh, over step. In terms of shell extension, there are many different types of shell extensions. I'll share the link to the actual documentation from the Microsoft website later on. I'm going to focus only on building a shortcut menu handler. And other alternative options are building a data handler, a drop handler, icon handler, property sheet handler, and more recently, Michael has added uh, ways to dynamically create thumbnails, info tips, and um, metadata for uh, a file or an element in the, in the system. And we'll also cover, of course, how you associate and how you create the, um, the connection. So again, this is, this is the um, idea overall, and now we should um, get to spend most of our time in demos. So this is the application that uses the jump list, and it has a jump list component and um, list box uh, just to display the, the results, the effects of the operations. Now I have two versions of the same application. One is written with Object Pascal and the other with C++. Let's look at this Object Pascal one in action, which is actually a slightly different well, not so much different uh, main form. Uh, we can actually run it, and it shows nothing, but it has a jump list with a couple of entries, and if we select one, the information from the jump list gets displayed on the, on the form. Uh, the application has a second capability. It lets you drag a um, source code file, drop it over, and have it not only displayed in the list, but also added to the, uh, to the jump list. And so it can be invoked again by selecting it from, the, from this shortcut list. So this is the application. The jump list configuration has two areas, beside IDs and some global setting. One is the categories you want to have, and we have this custom drop files category. And the second is a jump list collection with a, some ready to use pre-configured, uh, like hard coded type of jump list prepared at design time. Now there are two parameters. One is the friendly name. So that's what is displayed 
for the jump list, and the other is the actual uh, parameter or argument that is passed to the application. Now, the way jump lists work, and, and, and the reason they are really related with the file system, is that eventually the jump list invocation uh, creates a new application with the with a command line parameter. So what I do here is in the form create of the application, I actually run this command line open files, which is a local command, which basically uses the param count, the number of parameters passed, and the uses the param string function for each of them to read all of the parameters. Now it has two options, if it allows multiple files or not, it can be used in slightly different configurations. Uh, if, the, if it doesn't allow multiple files, it reads only one. And then if the open file is just a placeholder, all it does is display the item in the, in the list. Okay, so the same code we can actually see in the um, C++ application is fairly similar. There is an onCreate event handler that calls command line open files, and then also drag accept files for to accept drag and drop. The param count and param string reading is just converted to C++ here, but it basically does the same. Uh, now the other thing is dropping files. Uh, for dropping files, we need to handle in Delphi a message handler and in C++ Builder equally a message handler with a message map. So this maps the WM drop files Windows message to a local method. And in the method, we have to do some pretty odd operations. We need to query how many files are available by calling drag query files with minus one parameter, and then uh, repeat the same operation, drag query file, passing the number of the file zero to uh, this number minus one. And then we can read each of the files and we're adding them all to the jump list. You can actually drag multiple files all at once into the system. Now, beside opening, the other piece of code here is the code that adds the new file to the jump list in the category number zero. Well, it's the only category we have actually, uh, which is the um, dropped files category that we configured in the component. And this is how it's created. The file name in itself is saved as the argument and it's the parameter that's passed. Now, let's run this application and see how it behaves because that's quite interesting. It's slightly different than the previous one. So we have our application. Uh, let's drop one file from here. Oh, let's drop another one. Actually, let's try dropping two at once. Multiple selection, dropping two files. Um, and that's fine, that works. And now they are added to the jump list. Let's actually use the jump list, either this category or the other one, doesn't really matter. And what happens is that the new application is actually created. Every time you use the jump list, the jump list does not pass information to the running executable. The jump list is like an external file, like if you double click on a file that's associated with the application, it ends up uh, running another instance. So how comes the Delphi version does not actually run another instance? Well, that's because I added a little bit of code to the source. I create a mutex, and if it already exists, I just get out of the application and activate the current window of the same type. If it doesn't exist, I use the in standard initialization. And this activate window, it's some tedious low level code. Basically what it does, it goes with uh, enumeration, try to looking for the previous instance of the same window and then at the end, it uses WM copy data to send the information from the new instance, uh, to send the file name from the new instance to the original instance. That's how it looks like the other, the existing application receives the file input, but just because the two instances uh, share that information through a WM copy data. 
So here in the object Pascal version, I still have the drop files, but I handle a second message, which is the copy data message. And in the copy data, the code is somehow similar. Um, I can just grab the file name from um, this copy data structure, which is a pointer to a memory block. And at that point, I can just do open file and behave, I mean, go back to the standard, standard behave. Okay, so again, this is interesting. It's how you, you configure this jump list in the common button. Again, considering all of the handling and messages first, command line parameters, and second, the um, ability to create a single instance and pass information to the existing instance rather than starting a new, real new application. Um, that's what I wanted to show about the jump list. Now, the second demo and the second part is something that goes a little beyond and it's really a shell extension. Uh, a shell extension is in all effects um, a com server with a type library. We don't need to do anything specifically in the, specific in the type library, it's very simple. What we need to do though is have um, an, a server side object that implements uh, two interfaces. One is the iShell extension initialization. Um, that's shared by all shell extensions. And then the specific shell extension, which is a context menu. Um, the concept here is you right click on a file and the behavior change depending on some current status information and not something predefined like the file name, the file association, the file extension, or anything like that. And we'll see exactly what, what triggers the application. So here I'm implementing the shell extensions. The shell extension has an initialization function. Basically some data is passed as parameter uh, to this me in this medium data structure, that's how it's called. Uh, medium storage. And then, actually, as you can see here, the code you use for processing the input is basically the same of a um, drag query uh, mechanism. So you use the same drag query file method, but rather than using the standard handle, you use a special handle that's passed to you as parameter. This is how you refer back to the file that this extension is, um, this shell extension is operating onto, is being invoked onto. Uh, and ultimately, the, all, the real information that you need is to grab that file name. Uh, there might be other parameters useful, but generally what, what you need is the file name, uh, which is the full path of the actual file. So this is the code that is used for uh, intercepting the, uh, the file name, and this is stored locally inside the object. Then what happens is that there are basically three other methods. One is a query from the context menu. And this is basically the, what we're returning is how many menu items you want to get added. And here my, 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 the application logic is simple. If there is an instance of this a form that's running, the target application is running, then we add a menu item. If there is, and it's called send to to do file. If there is no instance running, we just don't do anything. Okay, so we can actually see this behavior here. If we go to the folder for this application, I can actually run the, uh, let me right click on a file and here's the current scenario. Now let me run the executable, which is just a very simple database app. And now if I right click on a file, I have this extra menu item, which is totally independent on the, on the extension. Just will work for any, any file in the system. Uh, and I can send it and communicate the file over. So we've seen how the menu is displayed this is the query context menu. And then of course, there is a get common string that is just a message. Um, 
hint that is displayed. And then the real meat is in the invoke command. Um, now there is there is some initial testing that the, ver the command being executed is number zero. That's the only option. And then what we do, we go to find window and we do a uh, copy data to that target application. And again, all we are passing is the file name that we got from the previous um, ape function. Okay, so all we need here is, um, is, is initiate this copy data. Now the other application, which is the target, is a very simple, straightforward application that you can run. It has a, a of course it's already running, so we can execute it once more. It has a simple local client data set attached to it for storage. It's a, a, a drag target, so you can drag and drop a file. But it also has the copy data mechanism to receive the information from the, um, from the shell extension. So drop files and copy data. And again, the implementation is very similar to the previous demo, the one with the jump list. Uh, although this, in this case, what we do is Creates, do an insert in the client data set and add uh, one of the fields. And then provide the area for input for typing uh, further information about that file. And here instead it's completely automated, so we just uh, insert the record and the, the other parameter is just aped. Okay, so the uh, concept is really being able to integrate deeply into, into the shell, into Explorer, in a way that, again, you right-click, there is a behavior, we shut down the application, right-click again, and we change the behavior. The shell extension is still invoked, so the shell extension has to be extremely fast and, and lean and straightforward because it's invoked every time, in this case, we are hitting something, and the reason is that depends on the code that's used in the shell extension itself for the registration, which is down here. So basically we are registering a shell extension context menu handler without limiting it to a specific um, extension, but for everything in the system. And this is how you do the registration of the handler. Now in a Win32 application, uh, in a Win32 system, you can just do register ActiveX server. In a 64-bit system, you have to use the common line and call reg server 32, oddly enough, and pass the DLL as a parameter. And, and that's all for the demos for this skill sprint. As I mentioned, just to wrap up, a uh, couple of learning resources. Um, this is a blog post of mine about um, the jump list and basically has code very similar to the, the, the one I showed in the session. Information about shell extensions on Microsoft MSDN. And uh, another interesting resource, which is somehow related to what I was showing, is shell extensions for uh, Windows. And this is a blog post by Andreano that um, is one a, a very nice resource on that area. Uh, on top of that, I was hoping to do it before the, the skill sprint. I'll try to do it the next few days, uh, create another blog post with some more technical information that I, um, I have, but I never shared um, publicly. And finally, remember to look to the special offers available on the Invertator.com website. And specifically, there is a very special deal about upgrade to enterprise that's active in uh, for the month of March. The, that is um, highly recommended as a significant discount. And then stay tuned for next week's skill sprint about spelunking Bluetooth LE. And after that, it's time for questions. Okay, so great webinar, Marco, on uh, shell extensions and all the great shell integration options available in Red Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder. Thanks. Yeah, it's something I've, I've, I've worked and played with over time. Uh, in the past, I also had other uh, types of shell extensions that are slightly more tricky to build. Um, the ability to create menu items that are not just tied to the file extension, 
but are really context sensitive. So depending on either the file content or some external settings, configurations, applications, uh, it's extremely powerful. And there are many applications that, that leverage that capability to do a deep integration with, uh, with Explorer. And I, I do have an article that I wrote for, um, uh, for, a, com for a, um, a training session. So I'm going to get back to it, and, but I need to clean it up a bit. So in the next few days, I should um, create a blog post with some of the contents, basically a description of, of that last demo uh, based on the, um, on the uh, context menu shell extension. And I have a question, Marco. I, of course, you can do this in Delphi and C++ Builder and, and VCL applications. Is there some shell integration? I know I've called shell execute from a FireMonkey Windows app, but I don't think I can use jump lists and so on in... in um, I, I, I think that's... Well, it's, it's not even... I mean, it's true, and it's false, and it's true at the same time. So. In terms of the shell extension itself, I mean, it's a com object, so it basically has no UI. Uh, now, in theory, you could create a com object, a com server that's kind of fine monkeyish, but it's again, there's no UI. There's not even a point in, in using doing one or the other. I mean, you just create a com server application, and that's it. Now, the other side would be using the fire monkey application as the UI for your shell extension, like I had two applications, the, the, the database one with a small table and the, and the, and the com object. Uh, now, doing that in Firemonkey is possible. It's a little more tricky because you, there is a, it's not that simple and straightforward to handle uh, custom messages and you need to handle at least um, uh, drop, um, copy data, or possibly some other user message. Uh, so that it's certainly doable um, to, to use the Firemonkey application as the receiver or as the actual UI application with a UI. But handling Windows messages directly is a little more difficult than on the, on the VCL side. So I, I appreciate this uh, skills parent, Marco. That was great showing some of the uh, components we had in there and then plus the ability to create a shell extension as well. I, I really appreciate that. It's something I've wondered about doing before. Uh, not really ever enough to actually look into, but it was something I always wondered about what would be involved in making a shell. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, but uh, I mean, writing the code for the first time, specifically handling some of these data structures, like this medium and other stuff, it's a bit odd, but there is a lot of documentation from Microsoft around those, and remapping that to uh, to Delphi code or C++ code is not, is not really that, that difficult, uh, but it's really a, a little tricky. And, but it's it's fun. You can really do a lot of dynamic behavior uh, integrated with uh, with uh, um, Resource Explorer on Windows uh, and really do like deep integration. That because I mean you can of course like um, show different status information, create different uh, dynamic context menus, but even like show different icons and different. Uh, depending on the on the content, like on the file size or on the actual file, or some metadata that at the beginning of the file, or a, anything like that, so it's it's quite powerful. I appreciate your comment about making sure it's respond or, um, quick as well, because I've had some of those before that like all of a sudden lock up Explorer and it's like very frustrating. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, every time you right click on a file, you get that kicked in, and <laughs> if it's low, uh, specifically if you register for star, like for any, if you're registering only for a specific file type, which you can do, I mean, you can have a set extension only for icons, only for images, only for Pascal files, whatever, uh, then it's not s s such a big worry. But if, you, if it's a global extension, um, a filter, then it's really invoked a lot of times. So. so there's a question here. Uh, was the T jump list introduced with a 10 Seattle? Uh, no, I think it was introduced in XC8. Um, I don't remember for sure. It's it's a recent addition. We first add the the taskbar buttons, which is another interesting thing to do, but not really so much of an integration. Um, yeah, I think XC8, but I, I could be wrong. That sounds right. That sounds right. Okay. I found it in what's new in XC7, but I may be reading. The okay, XC7. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> it was last year. <laughs> yeah, it was last year for XC7, XC8. So, 
Um, yeah, so jump list that yeah, it's built into Delphi. I was asking there's a question about that as well. So are there any libraries out there to help with shell integrations as far as making it easier with Delphi? Mm, I don't think I've ever seen them. Uh, I know there's been a few demos floating around. There is that that blog post from Andreano. Uh, I had um, material in some of my old books that I've also reused for training sessions that I, I plan sharing, uh, hopefully this week. Uh, but uh, no, in, in terms of a library, I, I've never seen uh, anything out there. But again, if you start right. from my code that has like the, the, the boilerplate, uh, I mean, some of the interfaces, they're always the same. You have to like implement them over and over. Uh, it's kind of standard code, uh, like even things for doing uh, handling uh, drop um, drop files or handling uh, copy data. I mean, this, I mean, 90% of the time, the code is almost identical and you just then add the specifics. So if, if you have an existing piece of, piece of code, then it becomes quite quite easy to adapt it. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking with your with the sample code that you have for download there. That's kind of get you 90% of the way there. I did, I did, I did find a link to a GitHub oh. repository, okay. uh, the Road to Delphi, uh, that has a dev shell tools a looking example with you. Okay. Go on. Interesting. Yeah. I'd, I'd, that's I had from, not seen it in the past, but could be nice. That's from Ruiz, who's a Ruiz, who's a MVP, right, Jim? Rodrigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an MVP. He's a, he's a smart Delphi developer. So. In there, an Andrea. Oh no, no, that's that's. I I know what it is. That's a different project. Although it might be a, a great demo. It's um a shell extension for Delphi developers. So it will attach uh, information to like projects. I mean, specific shortcut links and previews to project files, to Pascal files, and, and a bunch of other things. So you can have like a specific preview, context information, uh, extra right-click uh, uh, operations that are meant for developers. So yeah, yeah, no, I had seen that library. It's not for writing them, but it's a good example of a shell extension meant for, for Delphi users. Yep. We do have a taskbar. We do have taskbar examples. Yeah, there is a task for example, in the demo. I don't think there's a jump list example in, no. in, 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 uh, in our demo code. Because I looked for it yesterday. Um, so you can still use shell execute. I mean, there's there's this. Yeah, shell execute and shell execute X. That's the way to, to, it's kind of the standard way to run a separate process. There is also a create process. It's kind of even more lower level. Um, and, and the good thing about yeah, shell execute is that yeah, shell is you can actually execute a verb, so you can do open, you can do print, you can uh, really ask for an action, not just uh, just run an application. Yep. Yeah, I've used yep. I've used the optional parameters. Let me find uh, it's in the doc wiki. I know because I always go back to it. And then on uh, on other platforms, it's usually like a system call of some kind, right? You call this. Yeah, there are different things for different platforms. We've been thinking about creating a unified. Uh, class, I mean, run a process uh, with with parameters and something like that that would work across all platforms. It's a little tricky because different platforms really have different capabilities. Although, I mean, things like command line execution is actually available even on mobile phones. It's not not even just on on, on desktop platforms. So. Yeah, I put the MSDN documentation about shell execute so you can see the parameters. You can do, yeah, open, edit, find, explore. There's all these different operations, print. Yeah. And there's an equivalent uh, Delphi interface that you can use. Just go into the ID and type shell execute, hit the left parenthesis. Okay. Is it possible to do a taskbar menu like the old Windows Quick Launch, i.e. toolbars, in the taskbar? Oh, um, do, do they even have that in Windows anymore? I think they took that out. <laughs> you remember that thing where you could have a little, uh, but you could add like a program that ran down on the taskbar, like you could have Winamp running down there and playing your music back in like Windows 98. But you can do a, uh, you can do a tray icon. And put yeah, you can do it. I think it, um, yeah, no, I don't think, I mean, the, the, 
the, the, the jump list is, is the actual menu items you can add to the taskbar button. Like, for example, I don't know, Chrome is an application I use that have a lot of jump lists. Uh, like browsers and other applications tend to have this, this uh, type of interface. And this is a jump list. Um, I don't think, I mean, the taskbar button can have the preview, the custom preview, can have the extra buttons on the preview, uh, can have the, the, the progress bar in the, in the taskbar button. Um, it can really have menus or, yeah, or real behavior. Um, there might be ways to work it out a bit, but it's not really meant for that. Yeah, so the tray icon for, uh, again, for that uh, system tray area. If you want to do something down there with some activity and animation and so on. That's it. I've seen actually some apps that do things where they have like a few tray icons and it's like click this one to do this and this one to do that. So you can also put a menu interface. Yeah, no, no, I mean tray icons you can have as many as you want. And uh, I mean we have a tray icon component that you just attach yeah. menu item and that get notified to the application. So it, it's really quite straightforward. But it's a separate UI element on the on the uh, on Windows. Yeah, I think toolbar buttons. I, I, I've been trying it recently. I have my, in my fun size stuff. I mean, have this application that creates like a hundred tray icons, all alike. It's kind of flooding the tray icon area. <laughs> and Dale is saying, quick launch is still there. I use it all the time, even in Windows 10. There's a question, Marco, from Sergio. Uh, in the demonstration, what happens if the user select more than one file? to add to the two lists, are all files added? Uh, with the right click, uh, huh, I don't think I've ever tried, so I don't know. I mean, drag and drop with multiple files works with, with both demos. Um, the, it should behave similarly. It should have a single command with, uh, with multiple files, um, but I haven't tried, so it might work, it might not. As far as quick launch goes, I, I guess I misunderstood the question. Quick launch is just a folder on Windows that sh you put a shortcut in. So if you want to add something to quick launch, all you do is put a shortcut in the quick launch folder, which you can get from a Windows API call to find out where it's at, and you just add a shortcut there to your application, and that will add it to the quick launch folder. That's all that all the quick launch folder is. I thought you were talking about like when you used to have like Winamp minimized to your uh, taskbar, and you'd have the buttons and everything on the taskbar. But yeah, quick launch is just shortcuts in a specific folder. And so I, you, the question about what about multi-select uh, with the uh, to-do list sample, down, go to the blog post and download the code and try it. Okay, that looks like it. Great questions, everybody. Let me, I'll save the question log. And uh, thank you, Marco, for uh, the skill sprint. It was a pleasure. Very cool. And everyone, we'll see you again next week. It's me spelunking a Bluetooth LE, looking at different Bluetooth LE devices and trying to figure out if they aren't standard, quote unquote, uh, how you can still work with them from Delphi.